in a White House marked by a string of high-level comings and goings, an extraordinary level of palace intrigue and a general sense of unpredictability, there remains but one constant. That is the disorder at the center, perpetrated by a president who continues to break the norms of his office. It's the reason 2018 could eclipse 2017 for political turbulence. The first week of the year was breathtaking for its shock value, a presidential tweet storm of personal animus and policy provocation that overshadowed positive news about the economy. That has become the running story of the Trump presidency, a chief executive whose personal behavior has become the administration's defining feature rather than the gains of a growing economy or the significant course reversal from the Obama years. The tweets took another stunning turn on Saturday morning, when the president defended himself against charges that he lacks the fitness for office. He accused Democrats and their lapdogs and the fake news mainstream media of going after him the way he said they went after President Ronald Reagan, by screaming mental stability and intelligence. Trump said that mental stability and being, like, really smart have long been his two greatest assets. Winning the presidency on his first try, he insisted, should be seen as genius and a very stable genius at that. The tweets were in response to renewed discussion about the president's mental fitness prompted by the portrait of Trump in Michael Wolff's scathing new book, Fire and Fury. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders denounced the book as trashy tabloid fiction. The book has obvious flaws and errors in one case, Wolf puts a Washington Post reporter, Mark Behrman, at a power breakfast scene at the Four Seasons Hotel in Georgetown, a place Behrman says he has never been and Wolf has drawn past criticism for not adhering to rigorous journalistic standards in his works. It appears it was lobbyist Mike Behrman who attended the breakfast, Post reporter Behrman pointed out on social media. So there are errors in the book, and that must be considered in any evaluation of its merits. Yet Wolf's portrait of chaos and dysfunction inside the White House is consistent with the reporting by White House correspondents at The Post, The New York Times, Politico, Cable Networks, and others, almost from day one of the Trump presidency. Is that portrait exaggerated? Some insiders insist it is that in the White House, particularly under current Chief of Staff John F. Kelly and after the departure of Stephen K. Bannon and the lowering of Jared Kushner's profile, day-to-day -day operations are less chaotic than they were during the first half of 2017. Routine activity gets done. Major policy activity is taking place. Judicial nominations are being pushed to Capitol Hill. A major tax bill has been signed into law. Trump tweets that he is, like, really smart and stable. That, however, ignores the elephant in the room, which is how the president operates and the degree to which he manages to overshadow everything else. On that front, Wolf's book offers a worrisome portrait of an incurious president with a short attention span, a volatile chief executive who rails against his critics and who at moments appears isolated by his frustrations.